Welcome back guys. Today's tutorial is one I thought I would never do. I make zip around cases a lot just for based on my needs, but when I posted my son's laptop case in a bag making group, everyone's like, we want a pattern. I thought, mm-mm, mm-mm. There are too many different laptop sizes and devices, but you guys pestered me and I like to people please. So I designed a new style pattern where it is a retractable pattern piece that I'm pretty excited about to make a custom fit laptop case to suit any size device. So let's talk hardware. As you can see, there's not much. The only thing that you need is zipper by the yard and a zipper pull, that's it. You get a little bit of a webbing um, carrying handle along the top, uh, but keep in mind, this is meant to be just a carrying case. So when you unzip it and you open up your laptop, you've got anchors on the bottom here to keep it positioned while it's being carried, but you really should take your laptop out before use to prevent your device from overheating. But very, very simple, although it is intermediate. <laughs> Since this is a new pattern style that we've ever done before, I wanna kind of show you how to assemble the pattern piece before we do anything else. Right now you can see I have full sheets of paper. It is important that you print it out landscape, not portrait. If your printer is set to auto, it should automatically print correctly. But if you have it already defaulted to portrait, it will not print correctly. So make sure they're all landscape printed, that you double check the one inch test box on all of the papers, and then don't cut anything out yet prior to assembling this pattern piece. So I have my laptop here that I'm gonna fit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and lay this out. One, two, three, four. So um, this is assembling two different pattern pieces. You're gonna have your spine accent that we're fitting as well, as well as your laptop piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the corner edge of my laptop and set it on page three, right in this L bracket down here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and slide page four underneath that until I get the right corner in that little L bracket and I'm keeping all of these lines lined up. Then we're gonna go ahead and do that same thing. We're sliding all the pieces under page three because that's where we have all our cut information on and everything else like that. So keep the lines lined up, find that L bracket, Put that corner there and last piece right here. Okay. I don't want to get my head in the camera, I'm sorry. Where's my, oh, it's up there. There we go. So these are all lined up. You got a little bit of a gap, but I'll just fill those in with marker. But now we have our little spine accent piece up here created and our main body piece. So then I'm just gonna carefully lift this away and tape it all together and then I can go ahead and cut out this piece along the dashed line here and then the spine accent along the top. We have all our um, pattern pieces assembled. You'll notice that the spine accent is longer than the main body, that is important. That is why we don't cut out our, our pieces first and then assemble because this will not get fitted appropriately. Um, I've already cut the corner anchor piece in half, but if you're gonna cut by measurements and not use the pattern piece, which I do go over in the pattern, the, the formula to use for that, I would encourage you to print out the corner anchor piece if anything because then you can use this as the template to round all of your corners so they're consistent. You really don't want to cut out your um, pieces by measurement in rectangles and then just freehand a rounded corner because they all need to be perfectly symmetrical so when you fold it in half they line up perfectly. Otherwise how your corners will look on your zip around laptop case in the end will look very wonky and not line up if they're not all equal. Let's discuss interfacing real quick before getting started. For this protective zip around laptop case, I am using a foam. This is a one-sided fusible foam that's about a quarter inch thick, and it is by Pellon. It's FF78F1. They do sell a double-sided um, fusible foam or 
uh, naked foam where you would have to use something like Wonder Under to get it to, to fuse. And the reason I am using a fusible foam, even though I'm not a fan of how it crinkles when you turn it, because we're gonna cut it a half inch um, shorter to keep it out of the seam allowances. And to do that, you need it to adhere to the, the fabric. But because it can crinkle when you turn it, we are just gonna fuse it to our lining piece only because then you don't really see the crinkles when it's inside the case and your laptop's on top of it. So as you can see, I am using a quilt cotton. So I interface any quilt cotton fabric with a woven interfacing first. And I took that to the edges. And then the foam, I cut a half inch short along the entire perimeter. Now, because I am using quilt cotton for the exterior, I did add the woven interfacing, but I've also added fusible fleece to this trimmed from the seam allowance as well, just for more added protection and um, durability. If you're using um, cork, vinyl, you don't have to add any other interfacings to the exterior. We'll just keep it for the interior here. And then for the corner anchor piece, I did just add the woven interfacing. Again, if you're using cork or vinyl or leather, this would not need any additional interfacing. Now that I have all my pieces cut, fused, prepped to go. I do wanna remind you that why this may look different than this, because it is cut on fold, so don't forget to, to double that. Um, you are gonna need a couple pieces of quarter inch elastic, and then I did cut my spine accent. This is a silicone leather that I'm using. And then I do encourage you to use zipper by the yard because each laptop size is gonna be different, so I couldn't say a specific amount of zipper tape you're gonna need. You're gonna have to um, fit it by measurement, I'll go over that with you. And then you're gonna need um, a zipper pull. The last thing um, is we're gonna use some webbing for the carrying handle. So once I've cut out my, my main body piece, then I just take the webbing and I cut it the width of this main body piece. Keep it simple that way. So this is all we need for that. Um, I did recommend using 1 8 inch double-sided tape so that when we put on our zipper, the zipper can be held in place. And I mean, you can use clips too, but I find clips can shift out of the way and, and cause the zipper to move. But double-sided tape really seems to be the secret sauce when you put um, your zipper in place and to keep it from shifting and really keep a nice, accurate seam allowance for those pretty corners. To figure out the exact length of zipper tape you're gonna need, what you're gonna do is take your pattern piece and you're gonna measure from here to here and then here to here, and then here to here, and you're gonna add up all of those measurements and tack on an additional two inches for that final zipper measurement. If you're not using the pattern piece and you've already cut out your um, exterior, you'd fold it in half, and you just need to make sure you have some excess. So you want three inches excess along this end, and then I would just loosely wrap it around here, around here, and then I'd give myself an inch excess here. So this is, would be my total length needed. We're gonna need the excess tails on the one end for how we finish the laptop in the end. So you just wanna make sure it's not an exact perfect amount of zipper just to meet these edges. You need the tails. All right, so next step is we're gonna mark our centers on these short ends of our spine accent. And then we're gonna also mark centers on the top and sides of our body and liner and then cut the corner anchors from the pointy edge to the pointy edge into two, so you have two separate pieces. Now we're gonna prep our spine accent piece. So we're gonna flip it to the wrong side and we're gonna go ahead and measure a half inch from each long edge and draw a line. And I'm gonna take some double-sided tape because it is um, a faux leather or silicone that I'm using. So um, ironing it won't hold it and a glue stick doesn't really hold it either. So I do find that I need some double-sided tape to get it to really hold its fold. take the backings off and we're going to fold that long edge to our line that we just drew.
Okay, so we did mark our centers along the edge. So we're gonna place that along this. I do find that if I could just put a little, another row of double-sided tape down the center, it'll hold it in place for me. All right, so lining up the center notches, we do need um, one of the ends to overhang by three quarters inch. So I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna line up these, the center markings here on this end. So the right hand side will be flush. It's the left hand side that will be overhanging. So to be extra careful with this step that you don't end up doing it wonky for some reason, cause you can't really see this center marking here because it's overhanging. What I encourage you to do is to go ahead and measure that you have equal amount of fabric on each side. So it looks like I got about an eight and a quarter there, but I'm short, so I am clearly not centered. So just keep fiddling with it until it's nice and straight because this will make a difference in the end of your spine. If, oh, sorry, if it's not accurate. So that's eight, eight, there we go. Now I'm just gonna flip it to the wrong side and I'm gonna fold this end under a full inch. So that will cause the top exterior to fold in a little bit, but we wanna bring it under an inch, just like that, and clip this in place. So now we are gonna go to our sewing machine and we're gonna sew this folded edge go across here an eighth inch from each folded edge and back across this way, securing this fold in place. Now on to prep our corner anchors. So we're gonna flip them to the wrong side and we're gonna draw a one inch line back here. Both pieces along that long straight edge. Because I'm using quilt cotton, I do like the craft glue stick because it really helps hold the um, crease once I fold it and iron it into place. Push it down into that line. So now we're just gonna trim off these little tails, even with the rounded uh, edge, and then we're gonna top stitch whatever you want, eighth inch, quarter inch from the edge. I've just finished top stitching both of my corner anchors. So those are gonna go along the bottom edge and we need to mark our placement for our elastic. So it's gonna be three inches in from each spot. So you can either measure in and mark, or another tester pointed out that if you wanna just use this kind of as your guide, then you would just line those up like this and clip in place. All about easy, right? Now we're gonna actually put these where they belong in each corner, clip them in place, and then we're just gonna baste around this edge here and we're gonna tack these down at their corner parts. Now I personally prefer to trim these down fairly flush with the edge, but if that makes you nervous or you're worried about unraveling or whatever, feel free to leave them, but I do usually trim them. Okay, so now with the fabric anchors along the bottom, we're gonna be working with the left-hand side. We're gonna go measure three quarters inch from the center line on each side for a one and a half inch gap. So I'm gonna place my marking right here for three quarters inch and then right here for three quarters inch. So then we're gonna take this area and we're just gonna fold it to the back 
a quarter inch. So it kind of butts up against the um, foam on the back. And then we're gonna go to the machine and we're gonna sew a false stitch here because when we top stitch the whole um, perimeter, we're not actually gonna sew this area. So we want it to look like it's continuous. So we're gonna start and stop here, leave the threads long so that we can pull them to the back and tie them off. Don't back stitch at the beginning and the end. So this should be an eighth inch from the edge and then we're gonna set it aside. Now grab the, the zipper we already cut to size in a previous step and we're gonna have to put on our um, zipper pull. So I like to separate it a little bit. I am right handed so I kind of hold it in my right hand. You thread one side on first, pull it and seat it inside the other side Make sure it's pretty equal there, and then slide it on. So just make sure that it's pretty even, that it's not really wonky. Then I'm gonna slide this all the way to the end so that I know that this is um, the opening end of my zipper. So now we're gonna also place some markings on the raw edge of the spine. This is the folded edge, so on the raw edge here, up on to the spine accent, I'm gonna mark a quarter inch in from each long folded edge. So that's going into a quarter inch, and then we're gonna repeat that on this side. Then I'm gonna take that 1 8 inch double-sided tape that I had recommended, and I'm gonna lay it down starting there, all along the perimeter of this entire um, front side, going just to the spine accent. So it does kind of wrap to the underside, which is a little tricky, but end your tape right there, and we're gonna um, position one side of the tape first. So on the loose end, we're gonna flip it over and mark along the sides one inch down from those that short edge and place a marking on the zipper tape, one inch. If you can't quite see it, this is kind of a unique zipper in that it's black and white stripes, so you may have to put pins, but um, one inch down, we should have a marking just on the edge of the zipper tape. So we're gonna line up, we're gonna take our zipper and put it face down on our exterior. So let me remove this um, paper backing on our double-sided tape. And we're gonna lay our zipper face down on our exterior. So now I'm gonna just move my zipper pull out of the way, take the marking on the back side and line it up with the marking a quarter inch in here and line up the edge of the tape with the edge of our main body exterior. So once we get to the corner here, I'm gonna do really tiny 1 8 inch snips into the tape so it helps it ease around the corner. Don't take more than an eighth inch because our quarter our seam allowance is only a quarter inch, so you don't wanna be able to see it. But doing those little snips just helps it kind of round and lay nicely. But take your time with this part, making sure to line up the edge of the zipper with the edge of the material. Because again, how great your zipper install looks in the end is how careful you are with this, this portion. Moving your pull out of the way. Coming around this corner as well, so I'm gonna put some little snips. I've tried this, um, installing the zipper using just clips, and I find that um, the tape was far superior in keeping it perfect around those edges. So I'm gonna kind of follow it along to the back even though it's folding, sticking it to the double-sided tape up to that spine. Okay, so just like that. So now when we go to sew this on, we're gonna continue, we're gonna use our quarter inch seam allowance or even just a smidge smaller. Um, so that we can use that seam allowance as our, our guide when we um, sandwich the top and the liner and the exterior together. So a quarter inch from the edge, if it makes you more confident and you wanna go ahead and mark your quarter inch seam allowance so that you have a nice area to follow going around this curve, 
do that. Because again, take your time with the seam allowance on the zipper because it will affect how your zipper looks in the end. All right, so I just put my needle down at the quarter inch marking on the back side of this tape. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, follow the line on my machine, which is a quarter inch. need to hand crank going around this corner so it's not jagged and it's nice and smooth do what you got to do so I just go real slow and honestly I do hand crank a lot of the times going around the curve just because it can go too fast for me and usually I recommend using a zipper color or a thread color that matches your zipper so that it blends in but for instruction purposes, I'm intentionally using a contrast thread so you can see what I'm doing. up to this part that's kind of folded under just kind of use your finger to pull it to the top and we're going to stop just before the spine we don't want to sew into it yet all right now we're going to repeat the same process with the opposite end i just laid some double-sided tape and removed the paper backing and we're going to repeat the same thing with um, this marking and the opposite end of the zipper tape. So it's face down, we're looking at the wrong side of the zipper, there's my marking. I'm gonna line that marking up with that quarter inch marking on my spine accent. And then we're gonna go all the way around, snipping a little bit around the curves and get it positioned in place. All right, so you've got both ends of the zipper basted in place. We don't have any guts yet, but I do like to kind of test fit um, zipping it around just to see how my corners look at this point. Be very careful on this edge that you don't pull your, your zipper to foot off. But again, no, no real guts yet, but this will kind of give you an idea how your corners are gonna look. So, and also how your um, spine lines up, if it's perfectly in half. So that's why it's important to measure the spaces on your fabric. But it's starting to look like a laptop case. Before this next step, again, that folded finished edge is to the left. This will be the front and top of the laptop case. So if you're gonna add your maker's mark or label somewhere, keep that in mind. Add it to this part or your liner. Do that now before we go on to this next step. Now I'm gonna take the interior and we're gonna lay it right sides facing together on top of the main body exterior. So keep in mind this faux finish needs to go on the same side as this. So we're gonna actually have to flip it up this way so that the fabric anchors are along the top now and the elastic is along the bottom. So then I like to match up the center markings and clip on the top and the bottom. Then I will match up the corners and clip and then ease in the rest. So this, now that it, this is the exterior, you can see the fusible fleece is face up. So this is the exterior, which means our corner anchors are along the bottom again. So we wanna leave a hole for turning just inside the corner anchors. You don't want to include your hole where the anchors are. So I'm gonna mark about right here to about here so that my corner anchors are still sewn and I've got a big enough hole to turn it right side out. So when we go sew this, we're gonna start and stop at the anchor again. So I'm gonna sew right over my zipper 
previous zipper stitching line right here. So either right on top of it or just to the left of it so we can't see it in the final turn. But we wanna make sure that we don't catch either of these ends of the zipper when we do that. So I do kind of just pull them out a little bit. And then same thing when we get to the anchor, we're gonna pull it out as much as we can, but we're not sewing through this folded edge. So sew along here, stop at your turning hole, continue here, stop here, and then all the way around there. So just sewed along uh, the previous stitching. I did leave my hole for turning. So now I'm just gonna reach inside and turn the whole thing right side out. You can see that the foam did creak, crinkle a little bit during the birthing process. So I just kind of like to give it another press from this side. Uh, again, it's a moot point when you put your laptop in, you can't, you can't really see it. but. I do want you to go ahead and give this all a really good press as you're pulling the zipper so it's all nice and pulled away from the zipper. And then we have to make sure we do close this hole. So I'm going to fold this under and I'm going to pull it just beyond our stitching down here and press that then you can either add some double-sided tape to hold this in place for when we top stitch and it doesn't move or you can kind of whip stitch it hand stitch it if you want baste it closed if you're worried about the tape i don't really like to hand stitch much so i'm going to go ahead and add a row of tape just above the stitch line right in there And then when I peel the paper backing off, it's usually the hardest part, I swear. And then again, pull it just beyond that stitching, but not a whole lot because we're gonna go ahead and top stitch and we're gonna catch that hole. Alrighty. So we're gonna go to the sewing machine You'll see that we still have loose zipper tape. This is what we want. But we have to prep this end of the zipper before we top stitch. So before we top stitch, we want to finish these raw edges. So what we're gonna do is tuck it in between this channel here. Just like that, both of these. In between both, and we want it's centered, so we want to have them meet in the middle. We don't want one like this or anything like that. So do your best to kind of finger position it, so, position it so that this doesn't also bow out like that. So you're gonna tuck it in pretty tight, hold that with your finger, and then same thing with this end. So once you get it where you like how it looks, then clip all the layers together right there. Okay, so that when you fold it up, it should be nice and even. So now we have to do our top stitching. So I will start from this edge. What we're gonna do though, is we need to put this inside this channel here between these two layers. So, and it's gonna go in about a quarter inch. So I'm gonna start a quarter inch here, but I don't mark it on here because I don't want to see it. So then I will hold this between the two layers here with the clip and I'll put the edge of my clip where I'm going to start my stitches. And the same thing when we get to this edge, we're going to push it down into that channel so it's parallel. So it shouldn't bow out any at all like this when you sew onto this. You want it to be nice and parallel inside this. Right now it's hard because I've got my clip and my uh, zipper pull in the way, but when I come around to this edge, I'll make sure that it's nice and flush. And we're gonna sew an eighth inch 
from the edge here. And as we're sewing, we're gonna be pulling, giving some good tension with our fingernails so that it all gets pulled out and stitch evenly. Now, the bigger the, the top stitch, the more it's gonna um, come in on your space inside. So, you know, that makes these smaller. So come as close to the edge, an eighth inch, as possible. Now, it doesn't really matter where you start per se, but we're not gonna um, back stitch at the beginning and the end. We're gonna pull the threads back and tie them off. So I just, I'm gonna start off of the spine here and go around until I get to the opposite edge here. So I'm giving some tension with my finger on this tape, saying, so this is like a narrow foot, so it's about an eighth inch from that edge. So I just kind of ride the edge with my foot. If you were using vinyl or leather or wax canvas, something thicker, don't be afraid to hammer these corners before top stitching to get it as flat as possible. I'm using quilt cotton and I pressed it with the iron so that was okay, but if it was bulky there in the corner, get that hammer out and hammer those seams. to this edge, we're not sewing across. We're only going in a quarter inch onto this. So I have to make sure that this is not pulled out, but that this is tucked in between both layers on the back side of the liner and this, so that's nice and flush. And we're gonna go meet right on our previous false stitches. And then I stop there. Pull it out, we're gonna tie it off on the back side, and then we're gonna start back up here and continue across and so and we'll end up over here. Okay, so we just finished top stitching. Now I recommend you you blend in, use a matching thread for the interior so that you can't see any errors. But remember we did the, the false stitch here, so ideally it lines up if you use the eighth inch. Sometimes um, you win some, you lose some. But the more you practice, the easier it is to get, get this down. I'll, I'll admit the first time I did it, I still was like off, but seam allowances are very important. So now we're gonna take this end, we have to take the, the clip off, and we're gonna tuck it in between the channels just like we did the other side. So there's a little hole in there. This is why we left the tail long. Shove it in there. Now, this is also why we didn't sew across with the top stitch because once we get this in there, we need our zipper pull to kind of have to go in there as well in order to get it to look nice. I'm just gonna shove this in as far as I can get it to go. Keep fiddling with it. See how we can get it so it's nice and flush, but then in order to do that, the pull has to kind of go under and in. So now it's in between. Just keep fiddling with these until you get them centered, kind of like how we did it on this side. Remember how, like when you fold it up, it's nice and even, there's no bowing. So we wanna prevent that bowing here as well. So now when I got it kind of how I like it, I'll hold it with my fingers and I'll do a test zip to see how much more I need to kind of shove it in. But doing that test zip does pull it out a little bit. So I want to just push that in further. So that's how we want it to look. See how it's nice and even, just like this side. 
nice and even. So now I'm gonna kind of hold it, pinch it there as I'm unzipping it so I can know that this is where I want it. And then I'm gonna kind of hold it there with, with pins. Okay. So in order to anchor that in there, we're gonna add our carrying strap along the top and that's gonna catch it in the stitching. That's why we had such a long tail. So we're gonna go ahead and prep our carrying handle and this spine accent, and I'll show you the next step here shortly. So I've got my piece of webbing and we're gonna measure in four inches and place a mark on the underside of your webbing. I'm gonna do that on both edges. And then I'm gonna add some double-sided tape just to kind of hold the fold. And then we're gonna take the short edge and fold it over to that edge. So it's a two inch fold. Do that on both sides. And then I do like to add just another little bit of just enough to keep it positioned in place because I can't pin on my spine with it being vinyl, cork, or leather. Technically, if you wanted to use quilt cotton on your spine, you can because we are sewing through all layers, so there's that um, added stabilization. Um, but I I prefer a vinyl, cork, or leather just so because it's a carrying handle, that's where there's stress points. So now we're gonna have to mark two inches in from each folded edge here. Place a little mark. Same thing over here. There we go. And now we're gonna put this folded edge on each end just on those markings. So center it on your spine. So you got about a quarter inch gap on each side, right on top of that marking. And then same thing with this, right on top of that marking, centered. Okay, so you should have a little bit of a loop here. So now I'm gonna sew X boxes on this, and again, that's gonna catch this loose edge of your tape under here. So I like to go in a box, and when you have to go to complete the box, I like that when you have to go over it again, go to, over on this end, because again, that's more reinforced and then complete your box. So when you are sewing just along the edge, take a stitch extra beyond your raw edge on the bottom so that it is encased underneath that and you can't see the raw edge. If you need to draw your X box, feel free. I, I tend to eyeball it based on these landmarks. Here we go. I pulled the threads to the back instead of back stitching and then um, tied them off and singed them. So it's the moment of truth. Let's see if our laptop fits. Mine's a surface. So we'll put those in the front part of the anchor there. Pull this up right over there. And close her up. Ba bam So pretty.